Hi, welcome back to Danny Harris Arch in part six of this brown trout wood carving project. This is the final segment in this series and I'm gonna be hand painting all the details. I got a little bit of airbrushing left to do, but most of it's gonna be hand painting and it's really gonna make it pop and, and come to life or that's my plan anyway. Uh, but I appreciate you guys watching. And this is also the video that I'm gonna announce the winners in for the Cuts All Burr set from Barrywood Supply Company and the color pencil sketch that I did. So. At some point during the video, maybe towards the end, I'm going to announce the winners. So I appreciate you guys watching, and I hope you enjoy this video. And if you're new to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing. So I'm going to get the camera around here and get started. All right, so what I'm going to do now is start, I'm going to start putting in the spots. And I'm going to be using charcoal little charcoal sticks this is one of uh, Rick Crane's uh, on Angler's Artistry tricks but I've been doing this before before that on when I did uh, largemouth and bluegill stuff that put it on with charcoal and set it with uh, with the uh, urethane polyurethane but I'll also go back over it later this is just to establish where the spots are and then I'll go back over it later with the airbrush and I've got a two-step process that I'm going to use because it's hard to see on some of these but on some reference photos I have around these black spots there's a tiny little fringe of like burnt sienna it's got just a little bit of burnt sienna fringe to it and so I'll establish the spots with the charcoal and then I'm going to go back over later when I get to the uh, when I, to that point and go over each little spot with the uh, burnt sienna and then I'll go back over it with the black and that'll give it that little bit of tinge around the edges of it so uh, let me get this down here and get it started so like I said I'm just taking this little black charcoal let me keep this down here where I can see the reference And I've got more reference here on the head. So I'm going to follow this one here. So, like I said, I'm just going to take this black charcoal. And I'm gonna start, they're a little bit bigger, more concentrated here. And they kind of thin out as they go back. Let me start up on the head, cheek area. And there's, there's a line like from this fin to the bottom of the eye here where the spots don't go below. So I'm gonna make sure I don't go below that. spray those get those set and then I'll do the other side
All right, let me get this one sprayed on this side here now. So off camera, I decided to go ahead and paint the top to back darker. And I'm using the same color that I used to darken the fins with. And that way it'll kind of blend everything together. Start to look like a brown. Okay, so what I've done here is I tried to experiment with using just mica powders and in the Pearl X. This is a micro pearl, and it wasn't quite doing what I wanted with just the powders. So I mixed them together here to make this little um uh, i mixed the silver with the micro pearl and put a little bit of, of um, this glazing medium in it to make it um, a little thinner and then i'm using these little tiny micro applicators and i'm just going to go around each spot here and make the halo Showing up there. It, it may not be showing much now, but when I start the when I start the uh, scale tipping, that'll bring those out. closer to me we're gonna reach it Showing up, can you see what that's doing? Get the light just right, and you can see it good. When I get up here, I need to mix it with a little bit of gold because it's uh, it's got a little more of a gold tinge up there. So I'm going to do all this down here first, along the center here.
Okay, so I've mixed a little gold in with that silver, the gold mica powder. Just lay it back on before I spill it again. And then I'm just gonna go here and outline all these on the top here now. Ooh, that was too much. I may need to use this smaller one. Okay, so what I'm doing now, probably can't tell it, but I'm going over these black spots that are in the silver, kind of in the center here, with uh, burnt sienna and raw sienna mixed together. What that'll do is that'll give some of these black spots a little bit of a, a dark orange halo kind of fringe I guess you could say you know, the bad thing about spraying lightly with these at a low pressure the paint clogs up in the tip easy showing up on camera or not but it's just got where I went in with the black charcoal it's giving it just a, just a little orange so when I go back over with the black I feel like I'm repeating myself <laughs> so when I go back over with the black the black spots will have just a slight little orange fringe. If you look at some pictures up close, some micro shots of these scales, I mean these uh, spots, you'll see that little orange, little orange fringe around it. Man, I don't know why they make me one of these <laughs> a long time ago. This makes it so much easier than trying to balance it on that block there. All right, so I'm gonna put the black on here now. And it's gonna go on all the spots. So it's gonna take a minute. <laughs> but I wanna do these burnt umber ones first. Now I'm gonna leave a couple of them burnt umber because I'm gonna put some red spots in there. I just need to remember which ones I want to do.
on here. All right, there's some, uh, there's a few spots in between the black spots with halos, and it's just a little, um, like a burnt umber, just a phase, a hazy little spot. I'm just going to use some of the burnt umber color that I used to do these little, these little spots that are kind of okay. So, what's next is I'm going to be adding some olive green over the tail and the, the, the other fans, the pellet fans, the anal fan. I'm happy with the dorsal fan the way it is. I may add just a couple more spots in there, uh, but I'm gonna work on these fins and then I'm gonna start adding some color layers down here to the, the orange or the yellow of the bite belly here. And I'm, I'm probably gonna redo this the blue area here i'm not real happy with this little area right here on either side so i may slightly go over that with some while i have the greens out here so i'm gonna get started on that and for the green where's my olive, there's my olive green um there it is so i'm just gonna be put some olive green here it's just up I'm going to put just a touch of where is it burnt umber put a touch of burnt umber in there this will darken it up just a little bit and then just a tad bit of yellow ochre because I don't want to start out too dark Flow medium in it, and some glazing medium. I want it to be as transparent. much <laughs> well maybe not I do want it a little darker well, I need a tiny bit of black in there whoa Way too much. That's better. I can use this black for spots in a minute.
All right, so I taped it up. It's painter's tape here, so I don't get any overspray on these other fans here. So let's see, I'm gonna start on pectorals here. All right, so I'm gonna leave it taped up and I'm gonna mix up some black to do this the black on the leading edge and add spots in the tails and fix the spots up here. All right, so I painted over blue here and some of the spots, but I'm gonna add the spots back in. But I just wanna add, and I've done it here on this side, I just wanna add a little bit of this blue back in. But I want it to be in the background, not so much in the foreground like it was. So I'm gonna spray that, give that a little spray with some uh, polyurethane to set it. And then I'm going to um, spray the spots back on, then I'm gonna start adding scale tips. Actually, I'm going to paint some details in around the mouth here, and then maybe inside the mouth. Yeah, I'm gonna do the inside the mouth and a little bit of highlights around the scale edges i mean the gill covers here and then uh and then i'll start scale tipping Just taking a little bit of that same silver that I use for these halos. Put the halos back around in here.
And I'm not using just stark white. I'm using, a, I mixed a little bit of just a tad touch of yellow ochre and just a little touch of, of uh, burnt sienna in there. Just to where it's not quite just stark white. All right, so I'm going to take the silver pen and I'm going to go all down through the center here and tip all these scales around the halos and in the center. And then I'll switch over to gold and go down here to the body and on the top here. So this is going to take a minute. Okay, before I do the scale tipping down in the bottom here, I want to add some more layers of color. And I'm just taking some burnt sienna here, kind of dry brushing a little bit of that burnt sienna up just down here in the, just the edges. Just to kind of give it a little modeling. Just adding a little bit here and then I'm taking a dry brush and just kind of blending it in. Then I'll go back with some just pure yellow ochre and just kind of down here in this bottom part of that that way it's not all one solid color down through here not one solid airbrushed color. Let's see if I can tell you, show you the difference. See how it's just smooth and even color there. And then it's just a little more mottled here. the reference here you can see that it's not just one smooth even color down through here so that's the effect I'm trying to go for over here and I'm gonna get some lighter yellow here in a minute and go down here even a little bit lower now I'm just gonna take some cad yellow cadmium yellow and I'm gonna come right down here a little bit lower
just to give that a little bit more brightness down here. Say good. And I'm just doing little spots of it. I'm not really going all over. Just want it right down here on the belly line. Okay, for the I decided for the bottom scale tipping, I'm not going to use gold. I'm just going to use yellow ochre. Since I darkened this up a little bit with some of that modeling of the burnt sienna, the yellow ochre stands out on it better as a tipping. So I'm going to use this little tiny micro applicator. And tip all the scales below here in yellow ochre. And I may, after this dries, I may go over it with a fine dusting of gold pigment powder just to give it a little shimmer. All right, I think I forgot to push record, <laughs> but I took um, and gold tipped and silver tipped these scales on the top of the head and then the silver along the halos along the side here, gold along the top. And I've done that on both sides. But I'm gonna go back over, they're kind of bright and but i'm going to go back over i'm going to be doing some washes over this so it'll kind of tone that down and blend everything in but right now i'm doing all the um scale tips down here on the bottom i've got this side done and then i'm going to finish this side and then start doing some color washes on it And what I tip these with is these gold paint pens. These are pilot paint pens, gold and silver. Like I say, they're pretty, pretty intense on the gold, but after I put these washes on there, it'll, it'll kind of tone that down a little bit. And I'm probably gonna still go over the halos just a little bit with some pigment powder once the washes are done. And that'll be the last step before I add a, uh, a matte finish or satin finish to the clear coat, which will be the final step. All right, we got all the scales tipped down both sides and I am ready to start putting some dry brush on it. I think I'm going to go ahead and put a, a light clear coat on the whole thing because sometimes when I'm doing a wash it has a tendency to, to scrub through the other layer so I'm going to put a layer of polyurethane uh, this matte finish on here to keep that from happening and for the wash I'm just going to use some olive green and I want to use burnt umber 
some raw sienna. I'd say this is going to be just a real thin wash. Yeah, it looks good. And I may do several small, real thin ones. some of this glazy medium in here that'll give it a little bit of transparency this stuff is pretty glossy when it dries but mixing it with this opaque paint kind of kills that glossiness really dry and this is where I get my shirt dirty because <laughs> I want it really kind of dry and then I'll start going over all this gold here kind of kill it not too I mean it didn't kill it all the way it just kind of tones it down some Gives it a little bit more green olive on the back there. And I'm going off of my reference photo here. If I can show you kind of here on this white plate. I don't know if it's going to show up or not. But it's just a tiny little bit of stain basically what I'm doing on the back and what it does is it kind of kills that shininess of the gold and but you can still see the tipping let me do this side See if you can see that. Kind of dulled it down on this side, but on this side it's still pretty shiny up there. All right, now I'm going to mix up the color that I can put over the silver. And what I'm gonna use now, this is uh, the Deco Art, and this is sterling silver. And it's not quite as shiny or metallic. It's a metallic, but it's not quite as metallic as the silver I used to tip the scales with. So it'll still show through. Uh, at least that's my hope. <laughs> Let me put some uh, gel medium on it with it. And a little bit of flow medium. All right, I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes. Make sure I'm gonna use a hair dryer. Then I'm gonna go over the back one more time with the green. There's just a couple spots on there it needs to needs to dull down just a little bit. So I decided to go around these rings, little halos, just to kind of bring them out just a little bit. With this same silver that I killed the silver, uh, the mix that I used to do the wash on. I just want to give it just a little bit of, bring the halo back. I 
you can still see the scale tipping through there which is what I wanted all right now that I've got all the halos back on and the washes on I'll go back and just darken up some of these spots a little bit because the wash got on those as well so I want them to stand pop out a little bit more I don't want to kill too much of the if you watch the first part where I sprayed the black I sprayed the uh, burnt umber on first so some of the burnt umber shows up on the edge of this black so I don't want to kill all that all right I got all the halos done so I'm gonna go back over and just add some more layers of color here over these scale tipping that I did down here and I just want to kind of and I'm just using burnt sienna I'm just put little spit spots here and there and just using a dry brush and kind of spreading it around a little bit All right, that's going to be it for part six of this brown trout wood carving project. Uh, got it all done, finished up, and off camera, the last thing I did was I gave it about five or six coats of this polycrylic uh, by Memwax, and this is a clear mat, and I just did like five light coats and then one heavier coat, let it dry in between and do one heavier coat. So it's all ready to go, ready to mount on the habitat base as soon as I get that finished. And I probably won't do a video on that, but I may do a little video short showing it on there. So, um, but I appreciate you guys watching. I'm gonna get down to the nitty gritty here now. Uh, some of you know I've been giving away uh, or promoting a uh, giving away a four piece cuts all burr set from Bearwood Supply Company and a color pencil sketch that I did of a brown trout. So uh, last night I did the drawing, ran the. Um, random drawing and I got two winners here uh, the cuts all burr set is going to go to Ron Gableman and Ron is from Ohio and uh, Ron also has two YouTube channels one is called basswood carving and he does a lot of chip carving uh, little figurines um, with just hand knives and then he also has crusty cranks which is a, a channel that he paints artificial lures fishing lures uh, crankbaits, jerkbaits, uh, several varieties that he's got. And then uh, he also makes some soft plastics, but uh, he does some phenomenal work. So go check him out. It's Basswood Carving and Krusty Cranks. And the winner for the color pencil sketch is Marvin Bergman, and Marvin is from Germany. So he's been following along from across the pond, uh, but he wins the color pencil sketch of the, uh, the brown trout. So uh, you may have seen his name in the in the comments as as Murpish. So uh, he don't have any YouTube channels, but he's he's a he's a carver. So he's been following along. But I uh, also want to thank Bearwood Supply Company for uh, for this cuts off burst set. And we're talking about having more giveaways. Uh, haven't decided what we're going to give away yet. It may be uh, another cuts off burst set. It may be uh, something in, uh, along the lines of a. A gift uh, card for their website and that's uh, bearwood.com and uh, they they're a Canadian company and they carry all kinds of uh, carving supplies for the wood carver so go check them out and if you use my name Danny in a promo code you can get 5% off uh, any purchases that you make and uh, if you live in the States since they're a Canadian company they don't charge any tax so that's kind of like a savings in itself 
Uh, but anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave for me in the comment section below. And if you're new to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys on the next project, which I think is going to be a largemouth bath. So I'll see you then.